before Drew and Biggie have the face off, they must face the dirty dog. So they ask, why can't we be friends? 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 Meanwhile, Goldberg says he's gonna kill Bobby Lashley in a foreign country where they... Hack a journalist with a bone saw when he speaks out against the government. The ultimate plan is for them to get along before on Thursday they'll get it on. Why can't we be friends? I'm John Ratham with my review WWE Raw from Sacramento, California. And yep, WWE Crown Jewel is coming up on Thursday. Are you excited? I know I'm excited. I'm always excited for the Saudi shows. In all fairness, I hope that the fans in Saudi Arabia have fun, but man, the vibrant progressive country with the vibrant progressive government are putting on a show to prove that, yeah, they're just, they're westernizing. They don't hate women over there. They don't hate gay people. They don't hate anybody like that. They don't request dead wrestlers because they have no goddamn idea about anything outside of their narrow bubble that's inside their goddamn skull. So anyway, yeah, the show wasn't very good. In fact, I would call it pretty goddamn shit. Now, I didn't think it would be great. And in all seriousness, whenever you do a go-home show for a Saudi show or otherwise, they're going to play it safe and they're going to phone it in. But my God, they really phoned this shit in. And there were a couple moments that actually weren't that bad. And then, oh, they'd undo it with a dodgy finish. Or they'd undo it with a DQ finish. Or they'd just undo it by not giving a shit. So anyway, um, I don't know what in the fuck uh, in the zebra time warp Charlotte was wearing. I have no goddamn idea what that was. Let's do the time warp again. It was like the Madagascar zebra. Human centipede together with something from the Rocky Horror Picture Show. Human centipede also with something from 2001. A space Odessi. I think that's how that word goes. There are going to be a lot of jokes in this review because I just don't give a shit anymore. I watch this stuff to support the talents I care about. But honestly, before the pandemic, I was kind of checking out on Raw. SmackDown has been up and down since it's gone to SmackDown, or since it's gone to Fox. SmackDown going to SmackDown. SmackDownception. No, since it's gone to Fox, yeah, the quality of video has gotten better, and they put on some good matches, but this is about Raw. So anyway, where are my balloons? Where are the balloons? There were supposed to be some earth-shattering balloons. Terrible Marvin the Martian impression. Terrible. Absolutely terrible, yet somehow better than anything from Space Jam, A New Legacy. I hate it. It's my worst movie of the year until Cinderella, the Amazon original, came along. I reviewed those. Check out the Real Honest Movie Reviews playlist if you feel so inclined. Just like using the steps, if you feel so inclined. So, <clears throat> she basically, you know, Charlotte talks about her going away present. Why don't I have a celebration? Where are my balloons? Where is the champagne? Champagne? I didn't realize you were such a coin asser. Ladies, we need we need rest. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is spongy and bruised. Me wants snoo snoo, snoo snoo. Close enough. Can't we just cuddle? Uh, good old Kip just crawling on the goddamn ceiling. The benefits of being an alien. You see how I don't really give a shit about this show. She talks endlessly. Of course, a flare has to throw out you people, and then she has to mention that Bianca should go back to the back of the bus. I mean, line. She might as well have said either or because. To be honest, Charlotte probably feels the same way about those people that, um, you know, that Rick does. And oh no, you can't, even though, yes, her last name is Flair, they are really trying not to call her Charlotte Flair as much because they're trying to distance themselves from Ric Flair. You know, when they knew about that shit that may or may not, that pretty much did happen, something happened on the plane ride from hell. I'm choosing my words carefully because I already um, ranted plenty about that, but Rick is kind of passe now about this. He's, he's just kind of been put out to pasture. Maybe they can old yeller him, because honestly, at this point, what value does Ric Flair offer? So, um, Bianca comes out in a rose petal dress, and a dress, or the outfit, whatever it was, it actually fit her. They actually did fit her pretty goddamn well. It looked like it would have been a part of a Spanish soap opera, gasped in Spanish, yells at your friend in Spanish. Man, it's such a goddamn meme. And they have a back and forth, and then they have a lazy brawl, because they're going to have the main event on a little bit later, as opposed to having the main event on first, because the rest of it was just afterbirth. Good old John Cena thugonomics. Xavier tells not Seamus that he will beat gender. That's up to, that, that I really shouldn't say that, because Kevin Fitzpatrick, Kirkpatrick, whatever it is, the, uh, you know, the not Seamus guy, I really shouldn't call him not Seamus. It's not his fault that he's basically just there. 
and smiling. Not smiling at Justin Roberts' levels. I really hope that uh, Kevin Patrick doesn't have anything like Justin Roberts has in his closet. And I'm not just talking about skeletons. I'm talking about, oh, all those old phones with all those old text messages. And so, um, Seth Rollins is going to drip all over Monday nights. He already dripped all over Becky. And that's how babies are made. Hmm, I don't think so. So, Xavier, uh, with Kofi, took on Jinder with uh, the goons. Shanky and Veer. And Verdum. It's like Pandorum, only shit. Yeah, Xavier won. Life goes on. That's really all I gotta say about this. I'm glad Jinder didn't uh, make it, because why would anybody want Jinder to make it to the King of the Ring finals? Nobody really likes Jinder. If you think you do, you're wrong. Actually, you're entitled to your own opinion, but in this case, your opinion is wrong. Seriously, like whoever the fuck you want. So, Xavier won. And uh, Woods decides to grip his scepter and show it on camera while he wears the cape. Thankfully, more than just the cape and scepter. Dig it! Maybe you should hit ult Maybe you should hit Dana Warrior in the hit head with the uh, scepter. Get a woman to hit Dana Warrior in the head. Because I don't want man-on-woman violence. But fuck Dana Warrior. And by the way, fuck the Ultimate Warrior. I'm glad he's dead. So, Austin, um, Austin Theory, that is, was interrupted by Reggie and the 24-7 stuff and everything. And he's talking the truth. And he says, do you know who I am? Austin says the truth. I have a theory. You're a theorist. And I'm ashamed to admit how much that made me laugh. I'm ashamed. But it was funny. Truth has somehow, somehow looks the same as he did in 2001, and I will never understand it. It's either the blood of the innocent or really good genetics. <clears throat> Maybe it's new genetics. So, they're going to have a match later. Goldberg and Lashley hype package, where Goldberg basically said he will kill an African-American man in a, in a foreign country and get help from the Saudi government, News of 10. So, uh, Truth basically says, I accept this challenge on behalf of our Truth's friend, Jeff Hardy. Jeff moving with all the grace of a half-eaten gazelle. In fact, that's unfair because a half-eaten gazelle could probably drag itself faster than Jeff can walk or run. Look, Jeff's dynamic as far as, you know, his look and everything can't fucking go anymore. Him and Matt, they're wiped out. I respect what they've done in wrestling. Personal issues aside, everybody's got personal issues. It seems like they finally are on the straight and narrow and everything. Or in the case of Matt Hardy, trying to field a goddamn baseball team in his house. And Jeff... I don't think Jeff's known what year it is for about the last five, but Jeff put over Austin Theory in a match that happened. It happened. I think Jeff's gauges fell out at one point. The gauge community. And um, Austin Theory hit a TKO into the knee. More like Austin Theory. I work hard on these puns. Please laugh. It's my only source of, you know, life besides the producer, who is currently out hunting, by the way. He's probably going to bring me a, a bird like he did. Not a baby bird. No, this is not John Boyd from Anaconda. So, uh, Jeff, by the way, after Theory tries to take a picture, Jeff steals uh, Theory's phone. You don't want to see what's in Theory's phone. Oh, God, he looked at. Ooh, it's the theory of a pedo man. So, he takes a picture or whatever. Jeff, by the way, attacked Theory after losing clean. I mean, I don't think Theory cheated. I don't think he did. He knocked him on uh, crotch first on the turnbuckle, but plenty of people have done that. But whatever. Jeff's going to SmackDown, where he will likely not do anything of note, and let's be perfectly honest, if he faces Roman Reigns, f fuck, they're going to do that in, uh, for the uh, day one pay-per-view, aren't they? Day one. One is the loneliest. No, I'm just going to move on from that. So, Big E and Drew McIntyre uh, talking backstage, but can they get along? And then Big E uh, manages to protrude orally all over Drew McIntyre. Just protrude orally right in his face. Big oral fixation. Big meaty oral fixation right in his face. I'm going to make this as uncomfortable as possible because I don't give a shit anymore. So, uh, so Charlotte then interrupts Sonya and Pierce and says, I smell conspiracy. That's not what I smell. And that's not conspiracy. Do you douche? So anyway, Big E D took on Ziggleroo. That's just what I'm going to call them now. Why? The fuck's it matter? They're dirty dogs. Dirty dogs by the dozen. Dirty dozen dogs. Dirty dozen. Dirty dozen dogs sounds like an anime. So anyway, well, <clears throat> they said that Drew was brandishing his sword. Brandishing his throbbing sword, his big lengthy claymore, on camera. Stop thinking about it. You know who you are. I know you're thinking. You stop it. You get some help. So, can they get along? That's all I got. Uh, Drew, uh, was making Rude, uh, take Ziggler face first. I'm not saying I wouldn't want to see it, except I just saw it on camera, and I didn't have to pay for it this time. 
So a uh, big meaty ending, one, two, three, as you know, Rude just took all of Big E right there. Big E just making him take all of it. Take a glorious big meaty ending right there. Just jerking down on that, jerking down on the big meat. And can they get along? Well, they don't have to anymore because they're going to face off at Crown Jewel. And um, that that was basically it. Like, oh, they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna tease, you know, facing each other even though they beat each other up last week. Man, whatever. I don't know what the Three Brothers said. I really don't care because they can wrestle. I don't give a shit about this gimmick. I don't. I would quote Roddy Piper as far as a line, as far as their gear goes, but I think you know what line I'm gonna say. People know. People know. So anyway, um, Styles and almost show up. Almost who they can't. They have to pull the camera way back because he's like 18 feet tall. He's like a freaking titan that you gotta, like, shoot hooks at and everything, and it's like, go up, wee, I'm gonna kill it, oh, and then everybody dies, because Attack on Titan, apparently, is where everybody dies. Apparently Lance Archer had something to do with the anime. <laughs> so, he's, to, uh, Styles is talking about the smoke, the We Want the Smoke community. They're gonna, um, you know, watch the Street Profits take on RK Bro later. Owens is coming in raw. All right. Uh, if you see his wife, can you blame him? Man, uh, Mantar, Manstar, Manstar, that's what I'm calling him. Sounds like a weird uh, character from a 70s sci-fi. Because all they need to do is put on a stupid freaking, you know, animal head, and that's what Mansoor basically is. Because he's a decent, he's good in the ring. He doesn't mean anything. They build him up to wrestle at these Saudi shows, and then if they have him wrestle on any of the other shows afterwards... He's either losing or it's matches nobody cares about. Like, he built up a winning streak on 205 Live, which explains why only five people saw it. So he took on Cedric Shelton. And my god, Manstar actually won. I'm just going to start making up stupid names, because why not? It's not that I don't respect the wrestlers. I hate Vince McMahon and what he's done to wrestling. Then Ali will eradicate people on Thursday. He's going to the right place to do it, just saying. Um, and I like Ali. I think Ali's a great spokesperson. I wish Ali was being used a whole lot better than he is. And Manstar says he's going to, he says, you're, I'm going to beat you senseless and everything, and that I'm going to destroy you, and I'm going to get my revenge on you, and beware I live. So, Lashley and Goldberg uh, do scripted shit. I think Goldberg is falling asleep. I mean, I know at his age, you know, it, it's kind of way past his bedtime by this point. And says, this time you won't have any family to fight your battles or whatever. That's why Chris did what he did in June of 2007. I'll kill you Thursday, Lashley. Goldberg, again, you are admitting to wanting to commit murder on television. Stop doing that. Benoit did it. He didn't need cameras there. Probably would have been bad if he did. But the referee did not signal for the bell. Moving hastily on from the hole to hell that I am digging for myself right now. And I fell right in. I got drugged to hell. That was a stupid movie. So, Orton is annoyed by Riddle. Could you blame him? No. Orton says, what are we going to do tonight? We're going to win. And Riddle, what are we going to do on Thursday? We're going to win? I'm not surprised a guy that uh, apparently left his wife and kids and moved somewhere else would not be aware of how to win. Because he wins a life, and he doesn't take no for an answer. And he also apparently doesn't want to take care of his kids. So, <sighs> oh, God damn it. They showed a graphic for Keith Bearcat Lee. Or I think they're just calling him Bearcat Lee now. I know it is a tribute to Bearcat Wright and Bearcat Brown. I'm sure there are other Bearcats. And I'm sure the Keith is all about it because Killer Tim Brooks trained him. And Killer Tim Brooks had a hell of a, had a, hell of a career as far as training people. Some work in the territories. Keith Lee respects professional wrestling. You hear how he talks. He's very eloquent. He's very smart. And you want him to honor Bearcat Wright, Bearcat Brown, especially Bearcat Bright, Bearcat, Bearcat Bright, Rainbow Bright, Bearcat Sight. Wait, no, that's not how that song goes. God, I remember that. I remember that theme. It's in my head, but I can't get the words going. So anyway, um, I had a little sister. Well, what, what can you say? I mean, she always would say that. She would always play that. So the graphic said, Bearcat Lee claws his way to Raw next week. We are a couple steps away from him wearing a bear suit like in Midsummer, And I hope not, because if you've seen Mid... Okay, if you haven't seen Midsummer, I kind of just spoiled it. If you have seen Midsummer, you know what I'm talking about. And that means that we're just going to get Florence Pugh acting like really got... Or Pugh? 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 Pugh, Pugh, Pugh! Is that how you say her name? I know uh, I know that nobody has any idea what I'm talking about. If, if anybody has seen that movie, please let me know. But they were... Dig his claws or claw his way on Raw. 
Just send them home for six months, Vince. Bring them back after Mania with a goddamn less stupid gimmick. You fucking goddamn old, out-of-touch, stupid motherfucker that should have gone to jail in the 90s. Goddamn, Vern Gagne wasn't this fucking stupid when he ran the dying days of the AWA. He did the Team Challenge series. And he made Larry Zbysko a world champion in 1989. About six, seven years after Larry Zbysko was well past any point where anybody gave a shit about him. At least on a mainstream stage. I like Larry Zbysko. New world odor. One of my friends absolutely loves Larry Zbysko. You know who you are. Hi. So, Becky is coming to Raw next week. The man comes around on Raw. Seth is going to drip and Becky's going to come. So anyway, Piper takes on Shayna in a Queen's Crown semifinal. Hey, remember when Piper Nevin could have actually had a successful run on the main roster and then they gave her a stupid name? Dee Dee, get out of my laboratory. And they gave her a stupid theme and they gave her a stupid dance and they basically made her a goddamn cartoon straight out of the New Generation era. They made her worse than Bertha Faye. They, they made Bertha Faye seem better by comparison. And I like Piper, don't get me wrong. She's good in the ring. Maybe get her gear where her, you know, where her, uh, where her Nevins aren't going to, like, pop out and smack everybody in the goddamn face if they're in the first couple rows. Whatever. Just saying. Just saying. So, <laughs> Zelina is here to sit on the throne or whatever. They cut out the part where she needed, uh, you know, a booster seat to get, uh, you know, to step up there and then get up on the throne. Need another booster seat that they had to hide through, you know, shading and everything because she's really goddamn short. From now on, she'll be history. She'll be his. She'll be his. She'll be history. So this match could have been good, but it was also only about two and a half minutes. None of the Queen's Crown matches were over three minutes. Include some of the entrances combined lasted longer than the goddamn match. And then Shayna has the Barracuda Clutch. Dun, 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 dun. It's more the Bonanza theme than anything else, which is weird. So I saw Hart live, and they did Barracuda. Barracuda. They're really good live, by the way, if you get a chance to see them. Her, them and Joan Jett. So anyway, Shayna then loses when Piper basically just sits back on her and the most devastating maneuver in all professional wrestling. Surprise! Roll up! All that build for Shayna for absolutely nothing. People say, oh, it's because Shayna is a member of the LGBTQ community, or as in some form or fashion, I believe. As, uh, you know, Styles would say, the gay community... Piper's also, Piper also swings both ways, but yes, she got married, so I guess they're going to use that as a cover. Because we know how the Saudi government fucking feels about gay people. They would love them. Why book the Queen's Crown Tournament leading up to the uh, Saudi show? Why not book, why not start it right after, why not start the Friday after, when the rosters take effect, by the way, and then, and then, you could just, and then you could build it up to Survivor Series. And you could have 16 women. You could have 32 women. You could make it like the WCW Mayhem 99 Turp. Maybe not like that. Make it big. Make it, have it across NXT, Raw, SmackDown. Maybe NXT UK. Maybe have Kelly Ray. Whole point is, is you could have done something a whole lot better than this. Instead of eight women and matches that I think had to combine 13, 14 minutes. I know it was under 20 minutes for all those matches. Fucking shameful. Fucking goddamn shameful. You, I know they're getting a shit ton of money from Saudi Arabia. And yes, I will be reviewing it despite the fact that I can't fucking stand that government. I can't stand the government here either. Just so you know. The whole point is, they could have done this a whole lot better. I would have booked a 32-woman tournament. Yeah, it would have been a lot, but they got enough fucking women on the roster. You could interweave stories and everything. It's not like they don't have a bunch of women they aren't goddamn using. So anyway... Let's move on to um, let's move on to Nikki and Rhea welcoming Bianca to Raw, and I will say that I'm I feel bad for Rhea. She her gear her gear bag got stolen, luggage or something like that, and that's fucking bullshit. Somebody would take that. I'm not sure on the details, but I know lost luggage happens. But still, Xavier is on the throne or whatever, and Balor takes on Mace Kravitz. I wonder when I will see him again. Oh wait, he's going to SmackDown. Can he beat Dio? Because it was him, Dio. He slid around a whole bunch. And then Balor, the only way to take down a really big guy is to go deep inside his guts and pound him down to the point that he can't take it and he just prolapses in front of you. Don't ask me how I know that, but Balor won. And then 
He is upset at uh, Xavier for being comical, so he rips the scepter out of his hand. They fight over the scepter doing a tug-of-war thing like this. Why not just make this a gif? Just make this a gif, guys. Anyway, Balor is all upset. Somebody says Kofi may turn on Xavier. I mean, I don't think that would go over too well in a vibrant progressive country, but whatever. <laughs> um, in the name of Ragnar, not the name of Rygar. If you've ever played the Rygar game for NES or PS2... I love you for it, because that's really fucking obscure. Not as obscure as Karnoff. I think it was Karnoff. So, yeah, the Viking Rares are wondering what the hell Morrison is doing, why he's sitting in a pit, not of despair, but trying to find his chi. Raiders of Chi. Raiders of Chi just sounds like, you know, the Asylum version of the Ten Rings movie that came out. So anyway, Crown Jewel Rundown. Bianca took on Charlotte in a Raw Women's Championship match. All signs would point to Bianca winning the Raw Women's Championship. Which may have telegraphed the fact that she was going to, you know, not win the SmackDown Women's Championship. But since she's going to be on Raw and Charlotte's going to SmackDown, are they going to swap the titles? They're probably going to swap the goddamn titles. <sighs> 22 minutes left, so at least they gave them a lot of time. Of course, they gave Charlotte a whole lot of time because why the hell wouldn't they give Charlotte a lot of time? My goodness, let's give Charlotte all the goddamn time in the world. They don't need to give every women's match 10 fucking minutes. But if you're going to make the entrances longer than matches like in the Queen's Crown Tournament or others, you're right back to 2010 with a little bit of extra work rate. So anyway, <laughs> um, Charlotte was bleeding from the goddamn mouth or whatever. It must be her time of the month. I guess Andrade, El Ole Ole O, will have to wait before putting his idol in a certain place. So um, it was fine. Charlotte was dragging Bianca by her hair. Just symbolism right there. So we got kickouts, all the kickouts, multiple kickouts. It was like it was all Japan in the 90s or New Japan now. And then Bianca does a really stagey thing where she tries to go for Charlotte. No, no, Charlotte uses a chair. Oh, no, it's a DQ. And Bianca hits her with a chair and we go to close. We almost went to overtime. Yeah, fuck this. I'm going to be, I, I will be back, by the way, for NXT 2.0. And you will be getting the occasional uh, crazy reviews. You'll be getting a lot of reviews this week. Because it's the last of the G1. You also be getting a review of Crown Jewel. Guess what? I'm expecting to rant about that because that's a mania-worthy crowd. Or a mania-worthy card. I mean, I don't know about the crowd. Hopefully the crowd has fun. As they're basically held there at Scimitar Point. Because the uh, camels are just like... <laughs> Why the camels sound like a job of the hut? I have no goddamn idea. What am I on about? Who the fuck knows? Stay tuned for Thursday. Anyway, agree, disagree with what I said. Like, share, subscribe. Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Rithlin. I'll see you soon.